This episode of the Barclay Street Podcast is presented by the Victorian Responsible Gambling Foundation, a proud partner of the Bulldogs. Join us in helping kids understand the importance of loving the game, not the odds. For tips on talking to your kids about the risks of sports betting, visit lovethegame.vic.gov.au. Hello and welcome to the Western Bulldogs podcast, Barclay Street, preliminary final edition of uh, Barclay Street, a potentially awkward edition of Barclay Street, could even be an illegal version of Barclay Street, who the hell knows, there's plenty happening around, Eason Wood, my co-host, my comrade in the Barclay Street trenches, how are you my friend, how's the lip, it looks shocking. Don't you worry about my lip, Bobo. Don't you start trying to change the subject either. What are you? What's what's happened? What are you? What, what are you doing? Where are you going? I've, I've uh, there's a uh, I've uh, jumped ship. I've uh, he pose. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, <laughs> as, as the pet shop boys. Drop I've, anchor. I've, I've I've gone west. Uh, any other boating references? Any. Oh, yeah, God. I'm, uh, yep. So, uh, I'd like to say congratulations, Korea, but at please. the same time, I'd also I am a little bit jaded. I mean, we did have um, Bonte on last week, and we were joking about how difficult, you know, sustaining a one-year relationship with you on a podcast is. So you've mm-hmm. taken the ability for me away to uh, to quit, um, which is really quite. I was really uh, looking forward to that. I was really looking it, forward it, to it, sending it, that to you, but um. Yeah, you beat me to it. Well done. It's been a whirlwind uh, few weeks, plenty happening um, in, in our little family's life. But it, it was quite a moment when you and uh, Bonte both said, oh, yeah, the co-host only lasts a year and then they get shipped off. I thought, hmm, a little bit of reflection. <laughs> <laughs> well, might be my turn to uh, get the old heave ho. So, uh, so I've been, I've been, uh, I've been, I've been sent off, mate. Um, but yeah, no, exciting times for the family, big family adventure. But that's not what um, Bulldog supporters want to hear about today. They, they want to, they want to reminisce on perhaps a final series from five years ago. They might want to reminisce from a final about five days ago. And uh, and let's start there. What was what was last week's final like, mate? Because it was. It was up there with one of the great games of the modern era and one of the most tense finishes that any of us can remember for a long, long time. Hey, when that siren went, I cannot describe to you how emotionally exhausted I was at the end of that game. The, the ups and downs of that last five, ten minutes, whatever it was, was just... Yeah. Well, the whole the whole game, I mean, it was yeah. two and four. Like we, had, we had moments of um, where we felt like we were in control, we had moments where we felt like they were in total control, and then there was just this arm wrestle for the for the majority of the game. But that yeah. last five minutes and the moments in those five minutes, which are going to only continue to grow in fame yeah. um, as time goes on, it was just um, yeah, a special a special game, um, special for this group, um, yeah. it was special for me to be a part of, um, and yeah, it's. Uh, it's just incredible to be in a position to be having a tilt at a, at a prelim. Yeah. So you've been there before, mate, of course, and we should flag it right from the start that in the second half of today's podcast, we're going to chat with Tory Dixon and, and he was, you know, side by side with you in 2016 mm-hmm. and he played an incredible role in that preliminary final night against the yeah. Giants. But how did, how did Saturday night's, uh, win against the Lions. How did that compare with some of your past finals experiences? Um, yeah, it certainly is um, oh, as big a game as it has kind of felt like that. That 16 prelim against the Giants was um, was an incredible game, um, and that probably was the most stressful game I'd ever been a part of, and the best game I've, yeah. I've been a part of. Um, it's hard yeah. to separate those two now I mean I think as time goes on that'll um I'm sure one will present itself as the as the better one but um yeah yeah at this stage like the the just the insanity of the last part of the 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 Lions game was Mm. unparalleled that was just crazy for that emotional 
roller coaster to be even and then for Baz to kick that goal out on his left, which is just mind blowing for so many reasons. Yeah. The pattern to run, to go there, the angle and then Mid to cannon. finish Mid, yeah, his opposite cannon. foot, Mid cannon's attack and quick hands. Yeah. yeah. Um and the finish on an opposite foot. Now you know my troubles with my opposite foot, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> When I watch these things, I picture myself there. I'm like, the last thing I'm thinking about there is kicking it on my left and kicking it at the goals. Like, would you would you still be lining it up over your left boot if you if that was if you were in Bailey's position? Would you still be at the gather, still trying to like and just try? No, I'm reeling and I'm turning around and trying to find a handball for someone. I'm not, oh my god, that would just be much stress, and I guess that's why I'm in the back line. Um, <laughs> But then, like that flip side of then Bailey goes up and he kicks a goal, drop a ball, like in the next 20 mm. seconds, 30 seconds, whatever it is. And it's just, you can't believe yeah. Yeah. you're there. And it's just, just crazy. It was crazy. How was that? Were you as tense as the rest of us when, when the ball sort of jarred loose and it goes to Taylor Duray and Charlie Cameron? It was kind <laughs> of, it was yes, kind because of I was, like I, being you, sat in the dentist chair. Yeah, so you knew, you know that okay. There's a point down. They've kicked it. They're about to kick in. This ball's coming straight up the middle of the ground. Like it, everyone knows, that's exactly where the ball's going. Yeah. So there's the contest forming, and I'm thinking, all right. Well, I I was in a position that I couldn't jump in the air to impact that ball going forward. So I've run to the back of the contest, thinking if it's a soft drop, I'll be here ready for to be a layer, and it's fallen a meter shorter than that. And I think it was McCarthy just punches it and he goes yeah. full um, Falcon punch and absolutely blasts 40 meters, yeah. which is just unbelievable play from him. Yeah. But then to turn around and see Doc one-on-one uh, -on -one with the fastest player that I think's ever oh, <laughs> played God. the game in 50 <laughs> meters of space is just nightmare scenario for prelim on the line. Um, and yeah, for Doc to one, keep up, Two, keep his feet, and three, navigate it um, safely out of bounds in, in a uh, what do you call it? In a legal manner. Yeah, um, it was incredible. Do you, is it almost like um, Doc, as you call him, Taylor Duray, Doctor Dre? He's almost <laughs> like is is he a bit like from your vantage point? Because I've spoken to a few of you guys, and how he's so highly rated internally. Is he a bit like the indie band that's like? their seventh album has gone like shot up the chart. Like now everyone knows it's like, it's almost like in the last few weeks, it's like the rest of the football world's like, Oh my God, this guy's like a gun. He is a gun. Taylor Dre, he's not just a role play. He's not just a sort of neat sort of fills a role. Like, no, no, no. This guy's, this guy's a serious league footballer. Yeah. I think you've, you've, uh, you've said it really well there, Bob. Um, and yeah, you're right. He's a, he's obviously been so highly rated, internally for a very long time <clears throat> he's um just an outstanding leader he he's like a coach the way that he thinks about the game and can process yeah. it quickly and direct and yeah. he's great in in doing that um but it's yeah people are th i think starting to realize of um you know how good he's how good he actually is and that yeah. moment probably solidified it um and the even the way he started the game going back with a flight mm. um yeah I think Danaher crunches him and he just pops straight back up. And that's yeah. just how he plays. Um, yeah, leader, with courage. Um, and yeah, fast and defensively um, yeah, yeah. as good as good as we've got in our team. He's just... So, yeah. So. You mentioned Charlie Cameron before. You and I have <coughs> both had the, let's call it the displeasure of, of having to say he's um, very, very quick, like turbo sort of nitrate quick. Um, Outrageous. It was, there was yeah. some real concern for Laverne and Shirley. I've, I've watched you play just about every league game of footy of your life. That one in the first quarter when you ch when he's hooked around and ran that big arc and you're chasing him, I felt like I was in your brain for a moment and thought, I'll chase him. You're about to tear both hammies. Just pull back. Just pull back. They're about to both go. Is it, Can you confirm that you were... Laverne and Shirley sent the distress signal <laughs> upwards... We're I can capacity. <laughs> there's two parts to this. There's two parts. First of all, um, you can tell you've you've struck a chord with Laverne and Shell because I got about 15 texts 
after the game asking if Laverne and Shell were all right after that run. So it's resonated so well. <laughs> well done. I thought you started on a wild goose chase with those names, but it's landed. Yeah. Uh, that's very good. <laughs> but I can confirm, particularly my last two steps, as I think that I'm trying to have a last ditch effort of maybe reaching him yeah. and kind of extended a bit. And I felt both um, in those two steps. And I was like, whew, if they were ever going to go, it was going to go then and it was going to go big. Um, yeah. But Laverne and Shield played ball. They, they didn't do enough to accelerate me fast enough to get near him. But I mean, yeah. um, they, they hung in there. But that was an outrageous bit of play. I mean, yeah. I wasn't far. I was probably only a metre off him. And he gets a ground ball and accelerates through a ground mm. ball and gaps me. I mean, I might um, – I've played a lot of footy and that's only happened to me, I think, another two maybe two times yeah. in my entire career and I might not be as fast as I was when I was 21 but I'm in pretty good shape yeah, yeah. <laughs> you made me look silly like yeah what do you do? it's one of those moments ball. you're out on the ground and yeah. I'm sure you've had them before too where you just you sit back and you go Phew. yeah no it's like yeah you're like okay that's if it's in if it's but if the ball's in free flow like that it's like yeah. good luck yeah um yeah. Hey, uh, on, a, on a bit of a sour note, so Cody Waitman, we miss him this week. If ever there was a player that was sort of um, born for, you know, the, in, the intensity and the, uh, the, the, the energy of a, of a yeah. prelim, it, it would have been Cody. How, how's he holding up and, um, and, who, and who do you think might come in for him? Can you give us any insight into that or has that not been decided? Yeah, he's, he's holding up well, mate. Um, you'd be shattered as, as anyone would be. Um, missing out on the prelim and even think about like just the way he's performed. It's his, it was yeah. his first final against Essendon and he was our best player <laughs> kicks yeah. four. And, um, he was incredible. And, you know, you've watched what his energy is like, but playing with that is just infectious and it's wonderful. Yeah. And he gets under the opposition skin, which is just um, invaluable in finals. It's just incredible. Yeah. So he'll be, he'll be sorely missed, but there's a number of guys that, will be pushing to, to put their hand up. It's probably harder to judge um, because guys that haven't been playing in the AFL side haven't played for so long, Yeah, um, right. which is another another complication in the wow. in what's the scenarios that we're, that we're currently in. So um, it's not as obvious as to who's pushing up their hand um, yeah. because we don't have that form line. So, um, yeah, the coaches will have their... Uh, I suppose hands full in a way of, of making that right call. But um, what's been fabulous about the our team this year is I think we've played the most players out of any other team in the, in the comp. We've had the most even yeah. spread of contribution. Um, so whoever is, is next, um, he's going to be ready and um, yeah, we'll be ready to go. So how are the preparation for Port Adelaide? Have you, have you sort of gone through all of the planning phase yet of the week, or is there still still no. some still a bit? To no, so we're still. It's our main training session today, um, and we're about to go into that um, after I finish this. Yeah. Um, and uh, we're still. We finished our um, our Bulldogs D um, uh, review uh, the other day, and we've got some. I think we've got the our Bulldogs ball our offense reviewed yeah. today, and then after that we'll start to to go through the, um, yeah, the, the prep for, for, for Port. Um, I mean, we're fortunate that we played them, you know, so, so recently. Um, so we'll take a lot out of that game um, that we got done by just, by, was it only a couple of points, I think. Mm. Um, yeah. so that's fresh, you know, well and truly fresh in our, our memories. And we did a lot yeah. right. That um, There's a few things we could have done a lot better. And, yeah, we'll, we'll have those really clearly nailed down. And, um, yeah, looking forward to a big prelim, Bob. Yeah, oh, mate, it's going to be. It's, it really will be massive. This is, um, I think you know, I think the four best sides are left in. I mean, that's a bit of a throwaway line, but it it does kind of feel like it's the the four heavyweights of this this season are in it, and that's why that's why a preliminary final is um, often said it's the best weekend of footy for the year for the for the for the purists. It's um it's it promises to be promises to be massive. You know, exciting, dramatic, no doubt, intense. Um, all of those things. Hey, um, why don't we just have a little break because we've got to welcome in some Bulldog royalty, a man who had a massive hand in 
bringing the Bulldogs their second premiership in 2016. He had a massive preliminary final line. He kicked four goals against the Giants five years ago. Can you believe it's been five years since that night? Um, and that man is, uh, is Tory Dixon, and he's coming up right after the break. Welcome back to the Western Bulldogs podcast, Barclay Street. And at this time of year, it is our great pleasure to uh, reminisce. Long may that tradition uh, continue. Uh, Eason, you may have to take the torch and run with that one. But um, this is a man who will forever be golden in Bulldog hearts for what he did for a number of years, but particularly in that special month back in 2016. It's Barclay Street's great pleasure to welcome Tori Dixon to the podcast. Tori, welcome, man. How are you? I'm, uh, yeah, I'm well. I'm, uh, yeah, getting by. It's, um, yeah, tough, tough times. But, yeah, it's been been great to watch the Bulldogs, uh, yeah, playing so so good football and, uh, and yeah, find, find themselves in another prelim. So I'm, I'm going really well. Obviously, the lockdown's not great for anyone, but um, as good as you can be. How have you managed it with uh, with work and yeah? What's your what's your what's your life been like? What are you doing? Post, yeah, what are you up to? Not not much. Nah, pretty crazy to be totally <laughs> honest with you. I um I always put aside probably a year um, when I when I retired to to I don't know get get things sorted and uh, look after my son. Um, I'll give give him more time. Actually, it's probably yeah. yeah um, ta- change schools and and obviously you know. Um, being in the hub life and and football, it's a it's a full time full time gig. So I made sure yeah. that um, I wanted to give him more time, more more footy kicks, more taking him out. Uh, he's obviously going to Halebury in Berwick, um, basically yeah. where I went went to school. So um, there's yeah. a bit of driving involved as well at the moment. With all obviously when we weren't in uh, when we weren't out of lock we were out of yeah. lockdown, where there was a lot of driving, yeah. sort of 45 minutes every day. So basically, I was the the mum and the dad basically just dri- driving yeah, him down yeah. there. Um, I was also helping my old man out a fair bit. Um, he's uh, selling his house. So I end up being a bit of a, a project manager around his house, trying to sort out all his little mini issues and problems. So yeah, I've been kept, kept busy. I'm um, um, in, enjoying it. It's enjoying the, the break and, and yeah, it's about it really. What about the stock sticker? Oh, uh, what are you talking about? I don't do stocks, mate. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bob, Bob, you won't be across this, but Dicko is almost single-handedly responsible for the entire Western Bulldogs football um, playing group uh, investing in the share market um, as of about <laughs> 2020. Is he a, is he a, and is he a hero, is, and is he a hero or villain? He's doing well. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. You wouldn't wow. read about it. I wouldn't the go blind that leading far. blind. <laughs> Um, even a broken clock's right twice a day, I think, is the saying, and we got nailed it. But um, yeah, are you still are you still on that train, Dicko? Surely a bit more time now. Are you fully well, into the uh, research and the investing side of it? Exactly right. That's that's basically all it is these days. When I'm when I'm locked in at home and and doing nothing, I've got um my son upstairs in one room. I've got my missus in the other room teaching other kids because obviously she's a school teacher. And then I'm just down in my room, uh, yeah, reading stocks, reading this, reading that, maybe a little bit into the crypto these days as well. So I'm, um, yeah, I get told off for being on my phone just a little bit too often, but uh, it is what it is. So enjoying it and, uh, and yeah, it's all learning. Hey, Tori, you mentioned the Bulldogs before. Um, how do you find, how have you found this year being, um, you know, sort of one step removed and, and watching, watching this group play such exciting footy, but also with the tense finishes? Yeah, well, last last weekend I'd uh, had a couple uh, wines at home, and I don't think I've been that excited. Like I was just <laughs> edge of the seat. I had Riley in one room. He's uh, a mad doggy supporter as well as you'd imagine, and uh, he was thirty seconds in front of the other TV and didn't really want to watch oh, with us. So no. I, I reckon I ran into the room That's going, the- "Don't you dare say anything!" <laughs> like running in there going, "Just hold and." Um, oh yeah, I, I've never been so excited and uh, yeah, fantastic to watch and fantastic for all the fans and yeah, it's it's great to to bring some joy to everyone at home stuck at home. So yeah, fantastic. Does it um does it take you back, man? I mean, this is the this is your cross to bear, um, if you could call it that. But I think um, for the next fifty years of your life. TD, you'll um, you'll have to sort of you know retell these stories and go down memory lane. Um, but w- w- what are your memories of preliminary final night 
in 2016 and then we might flesh it out for you know the, the entire month because i know the bulldog supporters want to hear all about it yeah um it's a tough one it kind of sort of all blurs into a a, a big month to be to be honest yeah. um yeah, it's one of those things that you're nervous all the time. Um, I think the first the first final was obviously um, the most least nervous because there was just no expectation. It was like you're going over there and supposed to lose. We'd lost our last game, and and then it all just yeah. sort of flowed on for there. And it was just it was just a excitement. It was just um, you know we're the underdog. Um, let's just go out there and play good football. We were, you know it was just a special month and I don't really have too many um, memories of that prelim I guess the night before playing it obviously the day was just special as uh, as you'd imagine and one probably the best one of the best games I've ever played in that that prelim so um, actually I went for a round with uh, Liam Pickin this morning uh, in Willie oh, right. getting, getting blown blown by the, the Willie wind and um, <laughs> and we act, I actually said I was going to have a chat with you guys and we sort of had a little mini mini chat about that he told me about all his goals and how he was best finals player of uh, September so <laughs> no, he well, I'm glad it. he tells you about it we've been trying to get him on the Barclay Street <laughs> podcast so he saves all his best stuff for, for a run with his old teammates but he won't come on the Barclay Street podcast <laughs> I'll, so we'd, love I'll give, we'd love to hear the stories for ourselves I'll give him a little nudge all right next next run uh, next next one and a half k run I'll like I'll uh, give him a little nudge. <laughs> yeah. Now there were, there were plenty of highlights from that night. TD Easton here took a took a massive grab early in the in the in the game. Were you of the belief that um, you know the coaches and I and many supporters held that it was probably pretty undisciplined at the time for the defender <laughs> to be trying, not not spoiling from behind? Would you have? Oh, a view you've on? been setting up this whole thing already. <laughs> Just you had that right in the back pocket. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, trust oh, Easton to go for something, that. something don't like that. It's just that. ridiculous. Just poor leader. Discipline. Can I just on, say? Mate. Can I just say I made an egregious error in judgment on that mark. <laughs> That's why I went so early. I stuffed <laughs> up the timing, and it just luckily, yeah, escalated to nowhere. Right and fell in the hands. <laughs> Yeah, that was okay. definitely one of the things. I, I guess trying to, you know, think of think of the game. That was definitely one of the, the highlights that I, I, I remember. So, um, trying to remember yeah, five years ago, ago. it was that's definitely more. definitely one thing. It was a, a beautiful mark, well done, Easton. <laughs> hey, hey, Tori. I think Easton. I think we were maybe chatting last week about the the crowd noise on that preliminary final night when you guys ran onto the field do you have a memory of that of the the noise and the atmosphere and the fact that it was a, a Giants home game and it kind of things had sort of gone into bizarro world yeah yeah definitely it, it was sort of set up during the week and yeah you know how the excitement of uh, all the doggies fans getting the buses up there and it was just a build and obviously to run out there and um, experience more doggies fans than probably GWS fans it was just yeah it was surreal it was uh lovely to you know see the support and and uh yeah you could feel it you could feel the, the energy and the electricity in the air and uh yeah it was a fantastic little uh little moment and um after that initial sort of run out you sort of you know zone everything out and just uh, live in the moment and obviously get around your teammates but yeah it was a special moment do you remember the Giants running out I'm pretty sure they got booed yeah, they I did. remember them being booed running out. Of yeah. No, I, I, I can't remember. I think I must have been too focused. Did that happen, Bobo? <laughs> yeah, it that did. Happened, yeah, it? it was like what? And and because it if was you're such listening an... and you're at the game and you booed the Giants, thank you. Well done. <laughs> it was a it was a weird a like the, the, it was kind of it was pretty warm, wasn't it? So there was kind of a thickness in the air, and, and but the energy in that stadium, you could actually feel the atmosphere, and it was. I mean, I don't know what the capacity of that ground is, but it sound it sounded so much louder. It was this like hum of, and then when both teams ran out, it was like a thick, it was a thick noise, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And yeah. I remember at the at the it end of it. So yeah, it did it did, and then mm. the you know the game was what it was. It was, it's the most intense game of footy. I've ever watched, and I've said that a few times, but I also preface it by saying I also only watched half of it. I spent the other half looking at the roof. <laughs> I, couldn't, I, I couldn't quite. I was having a bit of a nervous breakdown at the time. But I remember I remember Siren Go's result, and I was sitting with um, Chris Grant, and we walked out of the coach's box, and the atmosphere and the noise, like 
like slapped us across the face. Like it was like jumping into a wave at the beach. It was just like slap. Mm. It was just this, the thickness of it. Um, Tori, what was it like on the ground? So you're in the thick of it. You kicked mm. four. Yourself and Clay sort of terrorized uh, the Giants defenders down there. What, what was the buzz yeah. like to play the game of your life on the night that the club needed it the most? Yeah, it was it was good to perform. I'd obviously been given a job on um, Heath Heath Shaw that night, and uh, I'm pretty sure my first you know um, effort or contest, I think I gave a free kick away, or I might have got tackled, and um, so I was like, oh crap, here we go, bad start. And I think he might have got three or four touches early, and I was like, oh, the, the right started, but no, no, that was um, you know, I think I play a lot of my best football. I played a lot of my best football when I'd been given a job. Um, when I had, you know, a, a clear focus that I had to do this and and knowing I was a goal kicker that, you know, I would, I'd just get dangerous off the back of, you know, good positioning yeah. and, and and good position. So uh, it was, yeah, it was obviously lovely to to perform and, um, yeah, to kick four and... Um, should have been yeah, five. That was, that was a, sorry, you go. Should have been five. Yeah, should have been five, should have been five. <laughs> um yeah, I know. I look back at it now and I'm like, oh, goodness me, just how oh, did I, I miss nice that? Game. So, <laughs> yeah, it was a tough one. Like, obviously, it was a fan, fantastic game and that was close the whole the whole time. And I reckon the only time I had little mini doubts was I reckon when they got about two goals up in the last quarter and I was just like, oh, not, you know, one more and we could be in trouble here. But um, we fought back and got the next couple and, and then, yeah, it just continued. Yeah. yeah, I think we all felt that that last call. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You could it was, it was the orange wave of running a few times. I was like, oh. Yeah, um, it was one. It's like we actually can't stop that. That's just their yeah. some weapons and their running power. It was yeah. just like yeah, it was the fine line. Just, yeah, yeah. Mm. It's just, hey, can't. Tori, just without without getting bogged down in the detail, but I, I think a lot of bulldog supporters would be really interested in just the de- the detail around. Like when you say you had a role on Heath Shaw, so how would that sort of change your game compared to just being out there in a forward and just playing with total freedom? What sort of things might you do during the game when you're, you know, playing on an attacking halfback like like Shaw? Uh, yeah, it's a tough one because obviously my game's attacking and probably trying to run away from my opponent. And you probably get taught from the forward not to run away from your opponent because the good defenders are always going to be in the right position and, and you know, not um, get sidetracked and, and, you know, do, do the wrong things. They're always in line with the line with the footy, et cetera. So yeah. I guess just being close enough to impact him and tackle him if, you know, because uh, he was always their, their handball outlet and, you know, their run yeah. and carry and, um, yeah, just being close enough and just know that, you know, I don't have to kick five goals and 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 yeah. destroy him it's just my four attacking game style four, yeah, four, oh, yeah, four, four yeah four goals yeah four. <laughs> i don't have to have a you know unbelievable <laughs> goal kicking game to 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 play my part yeah. and play well it's probably just negate him to the to the point that he's not having you know 20 and breaking the lines and and you know kicking it forward so uh there's a lot of things that sort of go through your mind when you're when you're playing a role like that and a, another one that i played was obviously brody brody smith against adelaide and you know both very attacking running half backs that um, can break the game open and and you see these days as soon as a, a running half back breaks through the lines it's very hard to stop as a defender so just negating them to a point um, starting positions and and yeah, yeah and then trying to hurt them on the on the rebound yeah um, how how angry was Heath Shaw on the night um, particularly when Liver got in his face. Have, was it sort of like a well, volcano sort of spitting and <laughs> fizzing? Is that I was scared for my life at times. I was. I'm not. A, I'm not. A, I'm not uh, the craziest. And I was just like, oh, I could get whacked in the face here, but I could get another free <laughs> kick out of it. So I don't care. I think there was one instance where I kicked the goal, and he sort of giving me a little elbow to the to the chin, and uh, it was a bit of a shock at the time. I think that's when uh, Liver must have got into him after that. But I look back at that, and I'm going, where's the where's the free kick? <laughs> <laughs> probably get probably get weeks for it now. Yeah, so uh, when when you look at this week, uh, Tori, so the dogs got Port Adelaide, who are you know they've been a, a a force that sort of come pretty late this year. Do you, do you give our boys a chance, and how do you think they should go about it? 
Uh, of course, I give them a chance. Uh, uh, yeah, they, they obviously beat them during the year and uh, beat them over there as well. So that should give them a, a lot of belief to that, you know, it's, it, it can be done. Um, you know, the crowd's going to be a, a factor. Um, that's probably one of the one of the, the crowds that are just, uh, you know, it's one of those special, special moments when you are running out there and just soaking in. Um, how loud it is, even if it is all for Adelaide, it's um, a special moment that, you know, the boys will all soak up. But, uh, you know, we've all done it before. We've been there. We've played finals last year. Um, you know, we only just got pipped against them last time in Melbourne. So there should be enormous belief that play a good game and get um, get the fundamentals right, then, um, you know, we'll be in it for a long time. And and then it will just come down to those moments. And, and yeah, I, I wish them well, and I really, really hope they get through. I've been cheering very hard, so yeah, no, it should be a good game. Uh, awesome. Um, well, we'll uh, we'll give it a proper send off in a sec. But uh, Eason, should we just rattle through a couple of couple of the player questions? I know he's a retired bulldog, but he's 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 bulldog royalty, premiership player. Really? We might we might just give you the standard player questions, Tori. I, I reckon we'll give him three. So I reckon give him the the kids movie, the email, and then the arch. I reckon to finish off. Right, Dicko. Um, the the great famous Archie Selleck, who we had on the podcast recently, it was a fantastic. It was a ratings bonanza for the show, and one of uh, Bob and I's favourite. But um, he's king of the nicknames. Did Archie have a nickname for you, and what was it? <sighs> he he did, but I, I, to be totally honest with you, I've forgotten it. You can you no. Know, have a, no. I, honestly, How is it not burnt into your no, brain? Every I day? don't know. I, I don't know. Five years, mate. It's uh, uh, no. I honestly don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't help you there. I, I'm not too good on the spot, so <laughs> that'll, that'll, that'll upset Arch. That'll upset Arch. He'll be very well, upset by we'll that. Text it. We'll get it during the. I'll have to. Yeah. I'll have to text it into you, and you can uh, let them know next time. Yeah. Hey, Dave. What a touchdown or something <laughs> like that? Sure. Yeah, I'm trying to share. Uh, anyway, we'll see. Hey, <laughs> if it comes to hey, me, yeah. I'll message it to you. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, Tori, can you remember um, when the uh, when the internet hit? And so you would have, you're not that much younger than me. Um, what was your oh, first will... email address? And was it as embarrassing this... as it has been for other players? Um, I, my my hotmail has never changed. It's just always been, yeah, my na- basically my na- my name. I don't want to get to <laughs> emails to any. Yeah, oh, yeah, actually, well, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I reckon I had an MS an MSN one, and yeah, uh, it might have it might have had a number, it might have had a number at the end. But <laughs> that's probably the most <laughs> embarrassing one. <laughs> uh, very good. But it would have been uh, well, similar to my name, so yeah, nice. Uh, so what was the what was the movie that terrified you as a young kid? Um, I wouldn't say terror. There, I can't think of a movie. I. I Teletubbies, no, 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 Teletubbies terrorised me. They were just something that I was just like, oh my god, I can't. Yeah, that was just one little thing that comes to mind. What's 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 yours? I've got like a whole selection of them. There's Jaws, Uh, Arachnophobia, uh, Texas. Yeah, what was that one, Ethan? Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh yeah, yeah. So I like I like all those sorts of things. So probably Jaws early days was yeah definitely definitely one that was one that really really got me a little bit worried yeah. about ocean ocean swimming. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you, ha- there you have it, Bulldogs fans. The man who kicked four in the preliminary final went on to be a premiership player the week later does not get scared. So that should just t- put that in your back pocket when the dogs take on the power uh, this weekend. Just do, do the Tory Dixon. Don't be scared. Run towards the flame. <laughs> Everything's going to be okay. Hey, Tory, thanks so much for stopping by uh, Barclay Street. It's always good to chat to blokes like yourself. Um, I know it's been tough times out there, but um, to you and your family, hope you're well. Um, and, uh, and, and just know that the Bulldogs fans love hearing from you, love seeing your face, and are still proud of what you achieved in your, in your footy career. Uh, Easton, Good luck this week, mate. Um, massive, massive weekend for the history of the footy club and, and this and this season. It deserves a, it deserves a big finish. So it looks like the team's got plenty of life left in it. Uh, Bulldogs fans, um, enjoy the weekend. Soak it up. Doesn't get much better than preliminary final weekend, and and so nice that the footy team and the footy club is involved in it. So um, good luck, Seed and Ellis. Yield to none. Port Adelaide, we're coming for you. We are coming for you. All right, wolf, wolf, see the footy.